This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. This video series on the latest WPA2 key installation vulnerabilities is in association with Mojo Networks, a leader in cloud-managed Wi-Fi. Hello everyone, uh, this is Vivek back again and I have uh, Hemant from Mojo Networks. And in this video, we are actually going to discuss the countermeasures of all of these WPA2 re key reinstallation vulnerabilities. So in the last couple of videos, we've seen a bunch of them. You know, we've seen uh, the first three which were part of the four-way handshake. Then we saw three more where the group handshake was actually used to the attacker's advantage. And then finally, where handovers were found to be vulnerable in some cases as well, right? So we've seen all of these vulnerabilities. Now let's understand how individuals and organizations can protect themselves. So the first six, if you actually look at the root cause fix, uh, we will have to fix client-side software. And all of us really know how tough and literally impossibly tough that is, right? Clients are extremely heterogeneous. You know, you, you have your laptops, in which you have multiple operating systems, you know, Windows, Mac OS, Linux, whatnot. Uh, on the mobile side, you have Android, you have iOS, and of course, with IoT devices and sensors, uh, there are so many combinations. And this is really where people are using a combination of open source client-side softwares like WPA Supplicant, as well as sometimes even proprietary implementations. So the right fix for the first uh, six vulnerabilities is to go ahead and fix and update client-side software. Now, this may or may not always be possible for all the reasons we've discussed so far. So there is mitigation possible in the interim period while you're doing client fixes on the AP side. So by updating the AP software, as we discussed with him in, uh, in the last couple of videos, there can be fixes which can be put in. Uh, of course, you know, all of this again is going to take time, right? Manufacturers rolling out their fixes. So if, if you are lucky and you have some kind of a zero day protection using wireless intrusion detection and prevention systems, then they could go ahead and detect things like AP Max spoofing and a lot of other things these attacks rely on in order to go ahead and you know, detect those attacks in the wild. Now, the seventh one over here, which is deals with handovers, uh, for that, of course, exclusively, you'll probably have to go ahead and fix AP software, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, Hemant, anything you'd like to add? No, I think great summary. Uh, so, like you said, whenever there's, wherever the root cause, you have to fix that first. But if that's becoming practically unviable, then look for some mitigation. And then even the mitigation can be difficult. Right. Then see if you at least have something like a zero-day protection in place if you have deployed it already, right? Some, right. some kind of intrusion prevention. Uh, so I think logically uh, that's, that's correct and that's very uh, informative. Uh, but we could possibly go into some of the details of what exactly the fix and mitigations be are that would be yeah. uh, you know, uh, interesting. So uh, li like you said, the first six are on the client side and then one on the AP side, right? Uh, I would like to classify this one on the client side into two batches. You know, look at first three, they are all in EPOL four-way handshake. Mm -hmm. And then there are uh, remaining three which are in the group handshake. Right. So uh, clearly, you know, the root cause fix and mitigation differ between them. So we can start with the first three from the client side, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, to, uh, this is kind of the, the message diagram I borrowed from our other video where we went into detail of this vulnerability. So uh, very quickly what this is about is uh, blocking this message four and four of four-way handshake in the middle, right? Uh, and then which causes some encrypted packets to be released from clients. Mm -hmm. uh, it also causes some uh, broadcast packets to be sent from the AP. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you kind of replay these three by three Right, and then uh, then what happened was with this replay, client would reinstall these keys here, and that created all kinds of problems. So naturally, the fix here is that if you already install these keys here, right, mm -hmm. on this message, when you try when you get same key back here mm -hmm. in a message, you don't reinstall it. Just send a message back 
to the AP and move on. So that the state machine is completed and you kind of eliminated the reinstall vulnerability here. So what you have to do is ask your client vendor to provide a patch that kind of doesn't reinstall this stuff here, okay. which was the root cause of the right. uh, vulnerability of numbering reset and then this packet getting retransmitted with the same sequence number or the broadcast packet being replayed. So those all bad things that were happening here will not happen then. Mm -hmm. So this is a root cause fix. Mm -hmm. And if it is going to be difficult for uh, you to fix all clients, so what you can do interim is, uh, if you look here, the, the problem was this retransmit of 304, correct? So you can have an access point logic that does not ever retransmit this third or fourth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. correct? Uh, now what will happen if there is a natural error in four-way handshake? Right. right, that's indistinguishable from the attack. So this situation could come up even without an attack that you do need to retransmit, but you're holding it back thinking that, hey, whether it is an attack symptom, hey, wait, you know, I don't want to do it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you'll keep kind of client in a hung state for a while. And to avoid that, what would be better to do is, I think immediately after that, you disconnect the client by sending the authentication. That way, you are at least resetting the stage, state at the client to something that is more logical than, rather right. than keeping it hung if there were not an attack and it was a natural occurrence of a retransmit. Right. So that's why I call it mitigation because uh, now you are kind of taking away some of the uh, robustness from the uh, connection set of fades, right, by doing this, uh, asking client to go back to initial state to uh, establish a connection because you think that there is an attack. It's like what we call as false positive, right, in the security right. jargon. So this is uh, vulnerable to kind of or exposed to false positive potentially. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's a mitigation, not a fix. So this is kind of uh, how would you fix those uh, first three in your table, right, which were all about the four-way handshake. Right. Because you focus on this retransmission of message three or four, which was the root cause. Mm -hmm. Fix it on the client or mitigate on the AP. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at the other three uh, in your table, still client side, but they were on the group handshake, right? So we discuss how exactly that works uh, in our earlier video. And if you, if you remember the root cause there was this release of this message, which was earlier captured here, right? So right. The, the, the way it worked was you first block, the adversary first block this second message of the group key handshake. Mm -hmm. which caused the retransmit from the access point, which right. it held for a while to stretch this interval right. and then release, right? right. So uh, obviously, I mean, if you get this message again, see, client is receiving it twice, mm -hmm. correct? There is no need to reinstall these keys here. Uh, right? Do not reinstall, actually, the PTK is not really relevant here, uh, but uh, do not reinstall GTK, IGTK, because this is just group key handshake. Uh, so that was uh, so that was kind of the fix on the client side that you would ask for, because now it's clean. Mm -hmm. There is no packet number reuse. There is no replay happening. Mm -hmm. Again, like you you said it very well. I mean, patching clients is such a task sometimes, especially right. people could be you know traveling and diversity and small sensors. Then what you do is a mitigation on AP side. So what you are going to ensure is this thing that could potentially trigger a vulnerability on client side never happens. Right. You le don't let it happen from the AP side. Mm -hmm. So uh, kind of that that goes back up because the retransmit actually happened back up there, right? Mm -hmm. So because the one of two went and then two of two was blocked. Mm -hmm. So AP said, hey, I'm not going to retransmit this because who knows, this could be an attack. Mm -hmm. And like we explained in just previous section, uh, you don't want to leave client in a hung state if it is a real problem, let's say real error on this message or something like that. Right. Right. So uh, then, then you send a disconnect immediately, so that it goes back to some logical state mm -hmm. and starts establishing. Mm -hmm. I mean, think here, here, disconnect means you're disconnecting an established connection, not just at the initiation time, because these handshakes are happening in the middle of the connection. Right, right. So you are asking client to disconnect completely and go back to like connection stage. And that's why it's not without some connectivity problems in some natural cases right. because uh -huh. of the false positive issue. Mm -hmm. 
and that's why it's not a fix it's a mitigation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a third column you showed is if you looked at all these six it they did require ap max proofing in the middle right correct right. right so do we have like a window from the time of this discovery or even before this discovery happened mm -hmm. there could this could be could have been exploited right, right. without your knowledge right so from that point, I mean, going back in time from discovery till you get all this patching and mitigation done, do you have any protection or did you have any protection? Right. So that all depends on if you are deployed any kind of intrusion prevention mm -hmm. in your Wi-Fi, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so if you had an intrusion prevention deployed and one of the key kind of capabilities of WIPs, as they call it, is detection of AP max spoofing right. and then blocking that AP max spoofing. So not only detect, but what happens in this case is if it detects this, this called sensors, right? They monitor your environment for all kinds of attacks. And if they see this another AP popping up mm -hmm. and then it's claiming the same MAC address as yours, right? right? Uh, then they call it out and they block that access point. So they won't let your clients connect to that access point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's usually done by doing, you know, uh, analysis of uh, the packets coming out of those APs, see they are coming from the same source. So in a way they are indistinguishable, but then you can apply some logics like RSSI channels or even better some uh, timing, anal timing analysis. Timing analysis is better because then it works uh, even if those two APs are very close to each other. So no RSSI difference right. or uh, uh, interestingly, RSSI can change you if you open and close the door between a sensor and an AP, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. I don't like the RSSI-based techniques ever in mm -hmm. Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. But it's so unpredictable. unpredictable yeah. uh, so even if a person sits, you know, somewhere or some, like we are doing this video shoot, and yeah. suddenly we are blocking a lot of signal here. Yeah. Uh, but but there are ways to do it robustly. Uh, so that this is what I call zero-day protection, and that's available for all those six. So I think that's kind of a good overview of all the remediation that you would do for the six client side vulnerabilities. So fantastic, I mean, you know, so these six basically, you know, we've already seen. What about the one with the access point, you know, the FT handover yeah. uh, kind of mechanism vulnerability? That, that's on the access point side. So yeah. clearly the fix has to be access point side fix. Right. And uh, th that, that you have to fix an access point. And again, once you understand how the vulnerability works, which, which we kind of discussed in one of the earlier videos, uh, it will kind of come apparent to you as to what the fix should be. Yeah. And if you remember, you know, after all this, their adversary kind of replayed this reassociation request, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And I said that it can be replayed any time right. uh, during the connection. Mm -hmm. uh, so what you, you, what access point was doing was reinstalling this pairwise uh, temporal key here. And that was causing all, all kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of that, you could kind of have two packets with the same sequence number going this way, or mm -hmm. you could re-inject packets going that way. Okay. Right. Uh, so uh, what you do on the access point side is do, do never re never reinstall mm -hmm. this PDK if you get a reassociation request where you already installed PDK. Okay. And then that that way your counters won't reset, and there your principle of AES CDR of non reuse of packet number is. Uh, solid and then all the bad things that happen after that don't happen right and then you just send this response silently because to bring the client to the natural state okay uh, I have seen some variants here uh, of access point implementations where for example your CPU logic could be operating a little bit independently of your chip logic mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so uh, this may not be always possible right uh, if you are in a situation where this is not possible to ensure, then what I would recommend is you s just disconnect the client after this. Okay. So okay. if you get another one here, just disconnect. So that way there is no fast handover, or at least there is no security hole. Right. Right. So uh, I would think that there'll be both kind of mitigation patches that would be out there depending on different access point hardwares and their platform capabilities. But both of them can at least fix the security issue here completely. Okay. Okay. So I think that's that's what you need to do, the patch your access points. Okay. Fantastic. I mean, looks like, you know, a lot of patches are probably going to be rolled out silently or, <laughs> you know, vendors might be explicit about it. Yeah. Uh, but 
I, I definitely think this is something which is going to take a lot of time to kind of fix pretty much in every AP and client. Maybe, maybe I don't know, never for some, you know, yeah. like IoT devices and uh, uh, other smaller sensors. Yeah. Uh, I, I think at least on the enterprise side, there will be, you know, uh, that will, the, the timeline of fix will be much uh, quicker, yeah. uh, as you said, but on the retail side, consumer side, uh, may never get fixed, actually, some of this. Right. So, uh, so we'll see how it pans out. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Well, uh, thanks a lot, Hemant, for you know sharing all of this knowledge with us, and you know thanks to Mojo Networks for uh, you know kind of partnering with us and helping us explain and understand these vulnerabilities. Uh, so once again, thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was a great discussion. Thank, thank you. you. This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online.